When you're on the ocean, you feel this strange mix of courage and humility at the same time, where you're fighting with nature, but you just know you're never gonna win. The pride of me out on the ocean working to help feed the planet is one of the most rewarding feelings there are. This is what we're going to be eating in the future. <laughs> Do I feel bad about my history of pillaging? We didn't know it at the time, many of us, but now there's no excuse but to wake up and act differently. And I think that's my journey and where I am now. Imagine an underwater garden. And the way the farm works is it's vertical. Each species likes a different level of the water column. From there, we grow our kelps, our mussels. Here's our scallops. And then we have oyster cages down below and clams on the seafloor. Our crops require no feed, no fresh water, no fertilizers, and no land. We open source farming model so that anybody with 20 acres in a boat and $30,000 can start their own farm. The idea is to use the species that Mother Nature's created to kind of mitigate our harm. So by farming, we become the revivers of ecosystems. A big one. So rather than pillaging the seas like I used to, my job now is to restore the sea. We are releasing large quantities of CO2 in the past century, and you get into an oxygen deficit. Kelp take up CO2. They take up nitrate. It provides a valuable food product that is healthy for us, tastes good. So if you're growing kelp in your coastal waters, it's doing a public good. Oh, this is just about to break. I was born on the ocean. I'm from a little fishing village. It's everything I knew. I grew up as a commercial fisherman. I dropped out of school when I was 14. I'm from Newfoundland, so fished the Grand Banks, the Georges Banks, fished Alaska. We were the last hunters of the sea, chasing fish around the globe, 40-foot seas, working 30-hour shifts, and making an incredible living. I'd make 40, 50 grand in a summer. But we were tearing up entire ecosystems with our trawls. We were chasing fewer and fewer fish further out to sea. The captains of industry, they just wanted to fish the last fish. And what we were thinking, younger generation, was, whoa, this isn't sustainable. So you'll do that. All right. Do you want to just I left the industrial fleets and began oystering. And then the storms hit, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Irene, two years in a row destroying all my crop. How do you run a business in an era where you have storms, you've got changing water temps, and what are the new species I can grow that'll be resilient, but also will help protect our seas? And so that's when I moved the farm off bottom. I thought that being able to create markets for the kelp was gonna be the challenge. The exact opposite happened. We are making kelp pasta. So we decided that we would use the kelp, insert it into something that everyone understands. Everyone gets a burger, throw it into some house-made aioli, pickle it with some beer, makes it a much more approachable dish. And then when you try it, you're like, wow, this is really good. We can actually grow an incredible amount of food in small areas. If you were to take a network of my farms totaling the size of Washington State, technically you could feed the world. There are 10,000 edible plants in the ocean. Kelp is the gateway drug, but this is gonna be a hundred year journey of discovering the new arugulas, the kales, the corns, the tomatoes out in the ocean. My goal at the end of my life is to see a thousand ocean farms dotting our coast. I wanna see the folks I grew up with employed. I wanna see jobs created. I wanna see great food provided to communities. This is our chance to do food right and agriculture right.